Hi friends, welcome to Curious Vet channel. I am Dr. Mausina. The topic for today's video is an important topic as far as anatomy and physiology is concerned. The tetralogy of Fallot. Tetralogy of Fallot is an uncommon but complex congenital defect and it is the most common defect that produces cyanosis. So what is tetralogy of Fallot? It is a combination of four components, pulmonic stenosis, large ventricular septal defect, right ventricular hypertrophy and overriding iota. Let's see the difference between a normal heart and a heart with tetralogy of Fallot. Here you can see a defect in the ventricular septum and right ventricular hypertrophy pulmonic stenosis and overriding iota. A single con conotrungal malformation that is cranially displaced formation of the upper portion of interventricular septum is believed to result in the narrowing of the right ventricular outflow tract leading to overriding iota and ventricular septal defect. The right ventricular concentric hypertrophy is simply a consequence of pulmonic stenosis and pulmonic stenosis may be valvular, infundibular or both. Inside a heart with tetralogy of fallot, here you can see a hole that is a defect in the ventricular septum and a narrow area in the pulmonary artery that is pulmonic stenosis and the thick wall that is hypertrophy of the right ventricle and the overriding iota. The breeds predisposed to this defect include Keysons and English Bulldogs. This defect have been recognized in other breeds of dogs and in cats as well. Coming to the pathophysiology of tetralogy of Fallot. The hemodynamic consequences of tetralogy of Fallot depend primarily on the severity of pulmonic stenosis, the size of the ventricular septal defect and the ratio of pulmonary to systemic vascular resistance. The direction and magnitude of the shunt through the septal defect depends on relative resistances to flow between the pulmonic circulation and the systemic circulation. Let's see what are the consequences. One is the reduced pulmonary blood flow leading to fatigue and shortness of breath and second is the generalized cyanosis resulting in polycythemia that is increased RBC production and weakness and they, cause, they are caused by mixing of deoxygenated blood and the oxygenated blood. Because of the venous admixture, the kidneys release erythropoietin resulting in polycythemia and the increased blood viscosity associated with polycythemia can lead to sludging of blood and poor capillary perfusion. And the consequences of polycythemia include ocular changes, bleeding diastasis and neurologic abnormalities like ataxia and seizures. So here you can see the pathophysiology in, in a flowchart. This iota is too large and it steals the space from pulmonary artery and prevent the ventricular valve closure. Then there will be mixing of oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood leading to hypoxia and we can see the consequences here. Coming to the clinical findings, affected dogs and cats may exhibit signs associated with pulmonic stenosis and cyanosis and a loud ejection quality heart murmur associated with pulmonic stenosis is present. Typical historical features of tetralogy of Fallot include standard growth, exercise intolerance, cyanosis, collapse and seizures. A precordial thrill may be felt in the area of pulmonic wall and in most cases a, a murmur of pulmonic stenosis is present. The intensity of murmur is attenuated when severe polycythemia is present and in some affected animals the cardiac murmur no. is absent. Coming to the diagnosis, diagnosis can be done by ECG, radiography or echocardiography. Let's see one by one.
So ECG, electrocardiographically, a pattern of right ventricular enlargement is usually seen and there will be S waves are deep and there will be right to axis shift, arrhythmias are infrequent. So this is an ECG of a heart with tetralogy of valet. You can see deep S waves and the right axis shift. And radiography. Radiographs demonstrate variable right heart enlargement and undersized pulmonary vessels. In humans, the heart with tetralogy of phallet can be seen like a, in the shape of a boot in X-ray. So here you can see the shape of heart and this is the tetralogy of phallet and atrial septal defect in a white Bengal tiger cub. And this is the picture of tetralogy of phallet in a dog in x-ray fluoroscopic examination. And next is echocardiography. Echocardiography confirms the diagnosis. Overriding of the aortic root can be confirmed in echocardiography and there will be right ventricular hypertrophy and the ventricular septal defect are evident. The left side chambers may be small as a result of decreased pulmonary venous return. So here you can see a five chamber view. So there is the dilated overriding iota in the middle of ventric, uh, this two, both ventricle and atrium. So it looks like a five chamber view. And in this picture also the ventricular septal defect is clearly seen. Routine contrast echocardiography demonstrate right to left shunting at the level of ventricular septal defect. Flow through the defect can also be detected by Doppler echocardiography. So here is the picture of Doppler echocardiography. You can see the ventricular septal defect and overriding iota. Here there is mixture of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Beta adrenergic blockade has been used to reduce the dynamic component of the right ventricular outflow obstruction and to attenuate beta adrenergic mediated decreases in the systemic vascular resistance. Increase in the systemic vascular resistance lower the magnitude of shunting. So this is a slightly modified view angle to optimize imaging of the pulmonary artery in the patient. Here the pulmonary valvular leaflets are not visualized. But it, it demonstrates the turbulence and acceleration of the flow of the blood in the right ventricular outflow tract. Polycythemia should be controlled by periodic phlebotomy to resolve clinical signs of polycythemia. And the prognosis is guarded but animals with mild to moderate shunting may reach adulthood. Coming to the treatment, corrective or palliative surgery can be considered, although most cases undergo medical management to minimize shunting and degree of polycythemia. Treatment options for tetralogy of phallet include surgical and medical management. Corrective surgery has been reported in dogs but is rarely performed. So this is a picture after the repair of tetralogy of phallet. It is an exterior view. Here you can see the ventricular septal defect uh, is closed with a patch. So patch to enlarge narrowed pathway from right ventricle to pulmonary artery can be seen here.
and ventricular septal defect is uh, closed here. Then palliative surgical technique to relieve clinical signs associated with tetralogy of fallot are rarely performed and include techniques to produce systemic to pulmonary anastomosis. Then these procedures increase blood flow to the lungs to reduce signs of pulmonary hyperperfusion and systemic hypoxia. In some cases, reducing pulmon pulmonic stenosis is palliative and surgical valvuloplasty or balloon valvuloplasty of pulmonic stenosis are also options. So let's see the key points once again. Tetralogy of Fallot is a complex heart disease with four components, pulmonic stenosis, ventricular septal defect, right ventricular concentric hypertrophy and dextra positioned or overriding aorta. And right to left shunting across the ventricular septal defect may result in generalized cyanosis and polycythemia. And treatment is dependent on the severity of pulmonic stenosis, right to left shunting, and clinical signs. So that's all about tetralogy of Fallot. If you find the video useful, please like it, share it with your friends, and comment your suggestions. If you are new to this channel and not subscribed yet, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a video. I will be uploading at least one video every week. So see you soon with another video. Thank you.